I genuinely feel lucky with what happened. We had many years warning that Dad's clock was ticking, and many years of the charismatic and generous character we loved. Then we only had a few short months of his discomfort when he was fading. Even then, we would have flashes of his sunlight between the clouds. Literally in one case. I remember him singing The Sun Whose Rays by Gilbert and Sullivan as sunlight fell on him in his hospice bed. We were lucky too that we were able to attend his funeral, along with over 175 other people. Dad was something of a local legend. The lockdown began that week. A friend of mine once mentioned to me that when his mother died, he was aware that the rest of the world was continuing, oblivious to the immense change that had happened in his own life. In our case, it really does seem like the whole world has stopped. Rather than moving on and making new memories for ourselves, we're surrounded in our house by things that remind us of him constantly. It's like everything has been put on hold for us. As our memories of him become less chronological, the few months of decline form only a small part of the larger set of wonderful years. Only a small sad crouton in the happy soup. My two sisters each have a framed rose from his funeral. One of these was starting to decay, and my sister asked my mother to paint a reproduction of it. The leaf is the original. I'm happy with my memories. I like the metaphor, though, that through our self-expression and our art, we unhook things from time and entropy. On the left is the mortal dad, beautiful but inevitably fading. On the right is my father as my mother carries with her. Perhaps it's idealised, but it's not subject to the chores of the real world, such as ageing. It's joyful, preserved and timeless. <laughs>